Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to introduce equilibrium. So firstly we're going to review what we mean by open and closed systems when we're talking about chemical processes. We're then going to introduce what we call static and dynamic equilibrium. That these kind of two states of being that, are, that certain systems can be in. And then we're going to look at um, modeling or a, a, a concept of how we can model dynamic equilibrium. You're looking at dancing, as strange as it sounds, and then introduce equilibrium, um, homogeneous and heterogeneous equilibrium as well. So what do we mean by open and closed systems first? We've encountered this concept before, and you've seen this graphic before as well, that this idea that this, the systems that we can interact with can be either open, closed, or completely isolated. Now we're not really going to focus on isolated systems because they're not um, they're, they're not realistic. Um, you know we don't realistically encounter them in everyday life. But open and closed systems certainly in the laboratory or otherwise that we encounter very regularly. So an open system is a system where matter and energy can transfer in and out. Okay, so um, a a beaker that is open to the the rest of the room is an open system. And so, you know, the water that's in there can evaporate or to the, the gas, a gas that might be produced in there can escape into the rest of the room. It's not contained within the system of the beaker anymore. Now, perhaps depends on what we're defining as the system. Maybe the room is the system and the room is sealed. And so, you know, the, all of that is kind of is, is closed instead, perhaps. Um, but typically that sort of thing is an open system where matter and energy can um, be coming in and out of the system all the time. Whereas a closed system only energy can be going in and out, um, can transfer in and out, but mass, the matter is all contained. Now we've looked at this back in the context of thinking of stoichiometry, the law of conservation of mass, and seeing that in a closed system that matter is conserved because we can't transfer particles in or out. Um, and so what we're going to be focusing on right, what happens within a closed system and um, um, kind of some extra aspects that we haven't looked at before. What would this idea of we call equilibrium? Now, so equilibrium that we're going to discuss here initially comes in two types. The first type we call static equilibrium. I know we don't bring it up in chemistry very often because it doesn't, it's not very, very relevant, but it's this idea of um, a, a, a situation or a system where there's multiple possible processes that could be going on, but that those processes have effectively stopped. So if we consider the seesaw, the, the graphic on the left, at the moment that because of the where those two children are sitting that neither is going up or down okay that the movement has effectively stopped there is there's no motion now if we think about it in a chemical context that there's no motion or reaction change between reactants and products that effectively the rate of both processes the rate of reaction has gotten to zero okay that this these sorts of things happen in situations where you can be going backwards and forwards but from one substance to another but then because of because th this has effectively stopped that there is no change to the, the system now the the example that we've got here is this idea of from going from between graphite and diamond okay they're both allotropes of the element carbon they have very different structures um, and the idea is that over time that graphite can turn into diamond and theoretically diamond can turn into graphite but the thing is that the time scales that are required um, for, for these you know, transformations, these processes to happen, we're considering billions of years. Is this the sort of time scale we're working with? Okay, so effectively the rate is zero. You know, if we if we're looking at within you know the, the minutes that we might be observing in the lab, there is going to be no change, um, and so we say that this is at static equilibrium. However, the, it doesn't apply very often in a chemical context where there is absolutely zero change in a system. A more realistic situation is what we call dynamic equilibrium. Now, in the past, we've referred to chemical reactions as going from start to finish, from reactants to products, and that's kind of the end of it. But the reality is that there's lots and lots of processes in everyday chemistry where you can go forwards and backwards. That reactants can form products, but the products can also change back into the reactants. Um, and so these, pro these two processes, are we, we say, are, are dynamic. There is constant motion. Um, a constant movement of particles. Okay, so in dynamic equilibrium, we have a forward and a reverse process that still occur, are constantly ongoing. 
So if we look at this graphic here, I'll walk you through it and then we'll, we'll look at some of its features. Okay, so we start with a certain number of, of moles, of, you know, particles of um, the initial reactant. There's no products left. Okay, so there's, um, so we've got eight moles. Now I realise there's a bit of a typo here, just, you know, bear with it. Okay, so we go from reactants and we form the product. Okay, and so, you know, so maybe some of that substance is still left unreacted. Okay, but we've still got... Um, amount of product. Now the total matter is conserved, we've got eight particles, um, in, you know, all together. But so then what happens is that then some of these products can actually reform the reactants that can go back to the left hand side. So some of them go back to the left um, as we get to this, um, this state. We still have the total number of moles, there's still all the particles, all the atoms are accounted for. And then what happens is that eventually over time we kind of get these backwards and forwards processes happening over and over until we eventually establish a, a steady state, okay, where you've got two lots of the reactant left and you've got six lots of the product. And then at equilibrium, that ratio will stay. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind though is what we're saying about it being dynamic equilibrium is that the, the, forming of the, the reactants forming products and the products forming reactants are processes that continue to occur. However, the rate of formation is equal. So what that means is that we don't observe any macroscopic changes to the system. So things, in, things that we can actually see firsthand, we're not going to notice. So there's no change in temperature, no change in pH. There's not going to be change in concentration or colour or any of those other things that we would identify as, as being a reaction that's ongoing. But that doesn't mean that nothing's happening. That's, that's the thing that I want you to keep in mind is that at the particle level, there's still plenty happening. And the way that I can visualize that or help you to see that is by looking at a model of looking at dancing. Okay, now I, this is not an original concept, but just so hear me out here. So what we're saying is that the, um, the people that are getting up to dance are the reactants. Okay, so the couples that are dancing are the reactants. The people sitting down are products. Okay, so what, but what we're saying is that over time in this system that we have, we always have two couples dancing, okay? And so um, as to, you know, how, as to which people though, um, that can vary over time. So we still have, so we have the same number of people sitting down and the same number of people dancing, but that, you know, we will have some people sitting down who stand up, some people who are dancing will sit down. The rate at which that happens has become equal so that then it seems like we have the same number. However, this, there's this constant movement of people going backwards and forwards, so that overall the same the name the number stays constant, but there is constant change in this system from you know person to person. Um, so that's this is kind of helps to represent dynamic equilibrium. If you kept looking at the the room at any one moment, you'd still see the same number of people sitting, the same number of people dancing, um, but the fact that individual particles are constantly swapping places from one to the other. Okay, and that's what we notice in dynamic equilibrium. Now, equilibrium, this idea of this steady state where we have a mixture of reactants and products, we've got processes going backwards and forwards, um, depending on the, the state of matter that those, those substances are in, we can define equilibrium as either homogeneous or heterogeneous equilibrium. Okay, so homogeneous is where all the reactants, all the substances in that equilibrium equation are in the same state or phase. Okay, so for example, a solution of acetic acid, which is this CH3COOH, um, that's the main kind of component in vinegar. And so we have all of these substances are dissolved in water. They're all in the same phase, the aqueous phase. Okay, so we have a combined molecule and we have separate ions, the acetate ion and the hydrogen ion. Okay, and so we represent equilibrium with this double-headed arrow, um, this idea that we can take an acetic acid molecule and split it into ions. Sometimes we will take these ions and combine them to go back this way. Another example is the formation of ammonia, NH3, in the harbour process, That's a particular um, important industrial reaction. All of these substances are in the gas phase, so it is a homogeneous equilibrium. Okay, we're in equilibrium between nitrogen and hydrogen gases and ammonia as the product. Again, the double-headed arrow to represent equilibrium. So if homogeneous means they're all in the same phase, then by logic, heterogeneous means that substances are in different states or phases. Now, they're not necessarily all in different states, but they're not all the same. That's the difference. So the decomposition of sodium hydrogen carbonate or sodium bicarbonate, um, we have solids and we have gases and liquids in equilibrium with each other. Okay, so we've got a solid on the left, 
but we've got a mixture of all three states on the right. Okay, the formation of a silver chloride precipitate, we've got an equilibrium between aqueous ions and a solid compound. Um, okay, so they are in different states, different phases. So the different the subscripts that we have here will be different across the equilibrium. Now, this, this idea of homogeneous versus heterogeneous equilibrium will factor in a little bit later in this module when we start to look at, all right, well, how do we determine um, what substances are present at equilibrium and how much? Okay, that it will become quite relevant. All right, so we reviewed what we mean by open and closed systems and seeing that a closed system is one where matter can't transfer in or out, only energy can. We're looking at then that sometimes in closed systems where the matter is contained, we reach what we call equilibrium. This idea where there's two processes that could be happening, reactants forming products, products forming reactants, but then we get to this kind of steady state or this, this kind of both things are happening at equal rates. In a static equilibrium, both rates are zero. It's effectively stopped, no change whatsoever. Um, and whereas in a dynamic equilibrium, that's not the case, the processes are equal, but there's constant change that's going on. We looked at how to model that by looking at the, a scenario of dancing with couples sitting down and couples standing up to dance. Um, and then we looked at the difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous equilibrium, um, seeing that the state of matter has a direct bearing on um, what type of equilibrium it has. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.